Hello there. Welcome to Sleep Mode. Bedtime stories and guided sleep meditations for gamers. Presented by Glitch Creative Labs. Please be sure to not listen to this recording while driving, operating heavy machinery, or while trying to frame the perfect Pokemon photo. The goal of this episode of Sleep Mode is to help you relax and unwind after a long day of work or play so you can put down the controller and get some rest. If you enjoy your time with us, please subscribe to our channel and give this episode a thumbs up. Sleep Mode is now on Patreon. Become a Sleep Mode Patreon supporter to get access to our private Discord community, where you can chat with other sleepy gamers and even directly influence future episodes of Sleep Mode. You'll also gain 48-hour early access to each new Sleep Mode episode, exclusive sneak peeks, and unlock story mode, where we skip the intros and guided meditation and get straight to the bedtime story. We'll also give a lucky supporter a shout-out in each episode. This one goes out to Lee. <laughs> you rock, Lee. Thank you so much for helping us build our channel. Now then, it's time to get some rest. Sleep Mode Pokemon Snap A picturesque bedtime story for gamers begins in 3... Two, one. Field Log 24-98 Welcome back to the world of Pokemon. For some people, Pokemon are pets. Others use them for fights. But you study Pokemon professionally as a field researcher. Wait a second. This all kind of sounds familiar. Anyways. You and your partner Pokemon, a feisty little Jigglypuff, have traveled all across the Kanto region soaking up all there is to know about the 150 Pokemon that call the region their home. Or was it 151? I forget sometimes. You've pretty much seen them all during your travels. From the smallest Rattata to the mightiest Gyarados, every Pokemon plays an important role in the world. But what about you? What role do you play? That's an easy question to answer. You use your vast knowledge of Pokemon to help future generations of trainers understand and enjoy these marvelous pocket monsters. While others may dream of becoming a Pokemon League Champion, you feel much more at home in the field, making new discoveries and assisting your dear friend and mentor, the world-renowned Pokemon researcher, Professor Oak. In fact, you've been asked by the professor to visit his newly opened Pokemon Photographic Research Center on Pokemon Island. I wonder what Professor Oak has in store for you on the island. Ah, speak of the devil. That must be the professor right now. You should probably answer your communicator. Hello? Are you reading me loud and clear? Excellent. First off, I'd like to thank you for your help in securing those Pokemon I requested earlier. I expect great things from the latest group of new trainers. Especially the bright-eyed and often tardy trainer that took the headstrong Pikachu. I sense those two have a bright future ahead of them. Right. Let's get down to the task at hand, shall we? Now, by now you must be very curious of why I asked you to join me here on Pokemon Island. I can't say too much over the comm. But to make a long story short, I need you to help me test out a new piece of equipment I developed to aid my research. It's all very technical. So, I'll explain more of the details when you arrive on my research station here at the island. Now, to make things easier on you, I've arranged for a transport to bring you to Pokemon Island. It's a ferry boat. Not exactly the SSN, but it'll get the job done. And hopefully the ride will be a little less eventful than your last journey by boat. You know what I mean. It should be arriving very soon to pick you up. We'll speak more when you arrive at the island. See you soon, and safe travels. Professor Oak, out. 
A new piece of equipment. How exciting. The ferry bound for Pokemon Island has now arrived at the dock. Please gather your belongings and make your way on board. Passengers, please note that a storm warning has been issued for this weekend. This will be the last ferry available until the bad weather passes. We apologize for any inconvenience this may cause. Have a pleasant journey. Huh, a storm warning. I hope this doesn't ruin your trip in any way. You make your way to the docks of Vermilion City and board the ferry to Pokemon Island. You wonder what kind of new gadget the professor has waiting for you to test out. Welcome aboard the Pokemon Island Ferry. Pokemon Island is known for its many untouched landscapes filled with a large variety of wild Pokemon to discover. Now, in order to preserve the natural wonders of the island, the catching of Pokemon found on this island is strictly prohibited. But you are encouraged to take as many pictures as you'd like. We will arrive at the island shortly. While you wait, please enjoy this guided meditation inspired by the adventure you are about to embark on. Let's begin. First, find a comfortable position and gently close your eyes. Take in a deep breath for about seven seconds and hold it for just a moment. Very good. Now exhale. As you do, begin to release any tension you may be holding in your body. As you continue to breathe deeply and slowly, imagine yourself standing on a vast open plain surrounded by lush greenery. In the distance, you see a beautiful volcanic mountain range, and the sun is shining down on you, warming your skin. As you take in your surroundings, you notice that you are holding a camera in your hand. This camera is your key to capturing the beauty and wonder of the world around you. Let's get your arms ready to take the perfect picture. Stretch your arms out over your chest and bring your hands together with your fingers gently locked. Now hold this pose and let the tension build up as you have your arms suspended upward. You're doing great. Now, release your stretch and lift your camera to your eye. As you look through the lens, you see a Caterpie crawling along a branch. It is ready for its next evolution. Just before it begins to form a cocoon, you snap a photo, capturing the moment forever. As you continue to explore the island, you realize that each moment is fleeting. Look, a Pidgey is soaring through the air. You'll need to be quick on your feet if you want to take a perfect picture. So let's give your legs a nice long stretch. Point your toes downward and allow your legs to tense up a bit as you stretch. Hold this position until I tell you to relax. Feel the tension and a feeling of subtle heat build up as you stretch out your legs and feet. Keep on holding. You're almost done. Now, release the stretch. Experience a flow of warm healing energy within your legs, slowly beginning to soothe your muscles and tendons, making them feel light and relaxed. As you quickly catch up to the Pidgey, it lands on a branch that is bathed in sunlight. It's the perfect time to take your shot. You lift your camera to your eye and snap another photo, capturing the true essence of the Pidgey. Every moment is unique and special. Each photo you take is a snapshot of the beauty of the world around you, frozen in time. Notice the way the sunlight filters through the trees, casting dappled shadows on the ground. Hear the chirping of the flying Pokemon and the rustling of leaves in the gentle breeze. With every passing second, the world around you is constantly changing. New Pokemon appear, 
each one more beautiful and awe-inspiring than the last. With your camera in hand, you are able to capture each moment, each experience, each sensation, and each feeling. You are fully present in this moment, living in the here and now, while appreciating the beauty of your surroundings. You feel a sense of calm wash over you. You are at peace, connected to the island and fully present in this moment. You snap one last picture, but not with a camera. You take a photo using your imagination, capturing the life-changing experiences of your Pokemon Island visit in your memory forever. When you are ready, open your eyes and take a few moments to reflect on this experience. What did you learn about yourself? And what will you take with you when your journey on the island is complete? We are now arriving at Pokemon Island. We hope you enjoy your visit. It looks like you've arrived at your destination. It's finally time to see what the professor has been cooking up in the lab. You excitedly grab your bags as the boat drops anchor near a wooden dock. It's time to get to work. You take your first steps onto a tranquil beach. Crisp blue waves gently caress the shore, and the warm sun casts a golden glow over the sand. No wonder Professor Oak decided to build a lab on this island. It's very picturesque. You take a moment to soak up the warm rays of sun and the invigorating smell of the salty sea breeze. You look off into the distance and notice a few Magikarp jumping in and out of the water and a Meowth waiting at the edge of the shore with a very hungry look in his eyes. There are so many different Pokemon peacefully living their lives in the wilds of this almost uninhabited island. You can hardly wait to start doing your research. Which reminds you, where's Professor Oak? He was supposed to meet you here at the docks when you arrived. Oh, hi there! A voice calls out from across the beach. Oh, it's the man himself, casually strolling along the shoreline towards your direction. Ah, oh, forgive my late arrival. I was just doing some last-minute diagnostics on the, um... Well, I suppose you're just gonna have to come with me to find out. Trust me, it'll be well worth the long boat ride. I can't wait for you to see it. Now let's hurry onwards to my lab. He seems to be very excited. And it's contagious. You can feel the anticipation build up inside of you. It would be a good idea to hurry up and grab your gear before the professor gets too far ahead of you. Oh, it looks like we're here. Now, I hope you're ready to be astonished. Hmm, I fear that I just might be overselling the new project just a bit, but all will be revealed soon. Step this way. You enter the lab and have a look around. The usual scientific techs and equipment used to study Pokemon are all there. But you notice one unusual sight. In the center of the lab is a large object covered with a white sheet. It's a good bet that the reason you're here is hiding just underneath that piece of fabric. Now I'm sure that given your eye for detail out in the field, you may have noticed a certain mysterious covered object. Well, let me introduce you to the new revolution in Pokemon research. Oak Labs proudly presents... Professor, the final diagnostics have been completed and there still seems to be an issue with the fruit launcher's accuracy range. A studious-looking lab assistant interrupts Oak as he gives his obviously well-rehearsed speech. Oh, I was on a roll there for a second. No need to boggle yourself, Natty. I'm sure it's nothing to be worried about. If you say so, Professor... Pardon the interruption. That's Natalie. She's from the Gala region, and she's been assisting me during this experiment. She'll also be acting as your guide throughout the duration of the test. Now then, hopefully there won't be any more interruptions. So, Oak Labs proudly presents... Ta-da! 
The Zero One Mobile Research Station. The professor lifts the sheet, revealing a bright yellow vehicle with a large domed glass cockpit. I see that you're completely mesmerized by the latest tool in the ongoing quest for Pokemon research and knowledge. Huh. It kind of looks like a souped-up ATV. Ah, that is where you're incorrect. The Zero One is designed to go deep into any environment with ease. It has an onboard artificial intelligence back navigation system that adapts to almost any situation, and it allows us to plot an optimal course for a field study. The viewing deck gives you complete unobscured views of your surrounding area, while displaying valuable information on a virtual heads-up display. Not to mention that this thing is built like a level 100 Machamp. The dome is completely indestructible, keeping the occupants safe from any danger that may occur in the wilds. This baby right here can take a direct hit from a hyper beam and not even get a scratch. I need you to embark on a preliminary photographic expedition using the Zero One. Your mission is to test the functions of the Zero One while documenting the rare and elusive Pokemon species on the island. Sounds simple enough. But why use photography for this assignment? A fine question! Candid shots of Pokemon in the wild would be the perfect addition for future iterations of the Pokedex. I really want to capture the essence of these marvelous pocket monsters. That, and the catching of Pokemon on the island, is strictly prohibited. So, take only pictures and leave only tire tracks, as it were. All you need to worry about is just completing the test run of the Zero One. It'll just be a quick trip around the beach. So, try to take as many pictures as possible. And if you have any changes you might like to see for the Zero One, please, by all means, tell me. I'm counting on your vast experience as a Pokemon researcher to give me the honest data that I need. Did you tell them yet, Professor? I was just about to get to that, Natty. Thank you. Tell you what? Well, to make a long story short, I'll need to take any Pokeballs and Pokemon that you may have on you. We don't want any biometric interference with the experimental equipment on board. So it'll just be you and a camera out there in the field. Oh, that's fair, you guess. It looks like Jigglypuff will have to sit this adventure out on the sidelines. I'm sure he'll understand. Excellent! Now when you're ready, enter the Zero One's cockpit and we'll get this show on the road. You slowly step inside the Zero One. All the lights and electric doodads begin to spring to life as the lid of the glass dome lowers down and seals you in. Okay, just a quick scenic trip around the beach. Take a few pictures and report back to the professor. Easy peasy. What could possibly go wrong? With the Zero One revved up and ready to go, you finally set off on your expedition. Hello, do you read me? A familiar voice echoes over the intercom system. It's Natalie. My friends call me Natty. Oh, excuse me. Natty. Very good. Your vitals appear to be at optimal levels. Are you comfortable in there? You can't complain. Excellent. Enjoy your journey and I'll be back to check on your progress after a spot of tea. Good luck out there. And do try not to break anything. Let's assume she meant anything attached to the Zero One, and not anything attached to you. The slow and steady pace of the prototype research vehicle puts you at ease as you make your way to the beach. You can already see a few Pokemon playfully frolicking around the shoreline. Oh, will you look at that? You spot a Pikachu chasing its tail. Now <laughs> that is adorable. You should get a picture of it. You quickly raise your camera and capture the perfect shot, freezing the joyful moment in time. The Zero One's advanced technology seems to enhance your photography skills, allowing you to zoom in, capture vivid colors, and snap photos with remarkable precision. That's one good looking picture. You should have the professor send you a copy of that for your scrapbook. As the sun paints the sky in vibrant hues of orange, blue, and pink, you continue your journey along the beach, encountering a ton of friendly wild Pokemon along the way. You see a group of Squirtle who playfully spray water into the air. The droplets glisten in the sunlight, creating a mesmerizing sight. 
thanks to the enhancements of the Zero One, you capture the playful squirtles like a true professional photographer. You continue to capture these moments through the lens of your camera, eager to document even more candid scenes. You can feel your passion for Pokemon photography deepen with each passing moment. Sure, you know about the Pokemon habitats and studied their behavior in the past, but capturing these little moments helps you really connect with these incredible creatures on a different level. It looks like Professor Oak's latest creation really is a winner. Uh-oh. It looks like that storm is finally coming in. The once vibrant colors of the ocean sky start to turn a dark gray as the Pokemon that reside on the island start to run off to their nests to wait out the storm. Hello again. Do you read me? It appears that a storm is heading straight for the island. The professor has requested that we stop this test run until the storm has passed. Ah, oh, shoot. And you're having such a wonderful time out here. I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but this does give us an opportunity to test another one of the Zero One's functions. Please engage the Dash engine. This will allow you to return to the lab in no time at all. The auto-navigation system should handle the rest. Just press the blue button to activate the Dash engine. We'll see you here at the lab soon. Sure, that sounds easy enough. You look around at all the blinking lights inside of the cockpit until you notice a blue flashing button. That must be it. You're sad to cut your excursion so short. But better safe than sorry, you think to yourself. As you start up the dash engine, you can feel the pace of the Zero One instantly quicken. You're pushed back into your seat as the scenery around you begins to fly by. Whoa, Natty wasn't kidding. At this pace, you'll be back at the lab in no time at all. Might as well just sit back and enjoy the ride. The professor really did think of everything when he built his technological marvel. Even at top speed, the Zero One is still comfortable and relaxing. What was that? Suddenly, the relaxing moment is shattered by an unexpected and powerful bolt of lightning. What's going on out there? The sensors on our end are picking up an electromagnetic disturbance. Goodness me, the navigation fluttering wildly like a startled Pidgey. We're losing connection with... The line goes silent as your vehicle veers off course and into the unknown depths of Pokemon Island. The once familiar seaside landscape transforms into an unexplored wilderness enveloped by towering trees and dense undergrowth. The Zero One continues to move forward, but without the guidance system to direct it. It just keeps on going straight at a rapid pace. You plow through the thick forest brush, getting more and more lost with each passing moment. It's pretty safe to say that the Professor needs to work on the Zero One's electrical systems, or that was just one heck of a lightning bolt. I wonder if there's a Zapdos in the area. Anyways, you have to figure out a way to make this yellow bucket stop moving before it zooms you off a cliff or something. It looks like you have no choice but to take the scientific approach, which means pressing a bunch of buttons to see if something works. You begin flipping switches and pushing all the buttons you can see in the cockpit, but nothing seems to have any effect. Okay, I guess it's time to bring out the big guns. You start pounding on the Zero One's dashboard. If it got your old TV working again, Maybe it'll do the same for a priceless new piece of research equipment. Right? Suddenly, the Zero One starts to grind to a halt. Whoa, did banging on it actually work? Hello, do you read me? Are you alright out there? A familiar voice calls out from the comm. It's Natty. I'm glad to hear that you're in one piece. It seems like there has been an electrical surge in the Zero One's operating system, causing a system error. The professor and I have re-established the remote link to the Zero One. We should be able to get you back to the lab. Hmm, it looks like I'm reading a few user errors on your end. You didn't panic and start haphazardly pushing buttons, did you? That's putting it mildly. And you have no idea what she's talking about. Right. It will just take a moment to recalibrate the best route for your return in the navigation system. Please sit tight and I'll get you back to the lab in no time at all. Out of nowhere, the ground below you starts to shake 
and a deep rumbling sound can be heard from inside of the cockpit. I don't mean to alarm you, but our sensors are picking up a disturbing amount of seismic activity coming from just below you. I would suggest bracing for impact. What? Brace for impact? What does she mean? Uh-oh. The tremors start becoming worse and worse as the ground beneath you gives way, sending you and the Zero One plummeting towards the darkness below. You make a crash landing deep inside the island's underground volcanic cave system, but fortunately, both you and the Zero One seem to be unharmed. Well, the professor really did build this thing like a milk tank, didn't he? You can see the fiery red glow of small lava pools illuminate the surrounding ebony rock walls. It's a far cry from the peaceful beach, but the cave holds its own kind of beauty, as well as a ton of wild Pokemon frolicking inside the volcanic ecosystem. Oh, thank goodness. You're all right. I was getting worried there for a moment. You hear a slight sense of relief in Natty's voice, about as much as a prim and proper Galarian can muster at a time like this. The professor wouldn't let me hear the end of it if I lost the Zero One, and one of his favorite researchers too, I suppose. Okay, it looks like I parked you over a sinkhole earlier. A terrible miscalculation on my part, but accidents happen. Now then, it would seem that you have been sent into the cave system just under the island's very active volcano. Don't worry, you're perfectly safe from the heat and flames inside the cabin. I've already plotted out a course back to the lab for you. It may take a while for you to get back, so I suggest turning this lemon into lemonade by enjoying the ride and snapping a few pictures along the way. Right, commencing autopilot protocols. You should probably get your camera ready. The Zero One springs back to life and slowly begins to move forward. Hopefully, this part of the tour will be a little less... eventful. As you venture deep into the caves, you encounter a symphony of sights and sounds. A hungry-looking Zubat flies around low-hanging stalactites, and a mischievous-looking group of Diglett tunnel and play amidst the volcanic rocks. And a hulking golem relaxes by a pool of red-hot magma. Each Pokemon you encounter presents a unique challenge and the opportunity to capture its essence in one awe-inspiring photograph. Who knew that taking pictures of Pokemon could be so invigorating? It's a shame that you have to move on to another assignment in the Sinnoh region after this field study has concluded. You wouldn't mind personally helping the professor work out a few kinks in the Zero One. It really is a marvelous piece of equipment. Plus, you're getting some great shots for your research notebook out here. Then again, you begin to wonder what awaits you in the Sinnoh region after this adventure is over. Another story for another day, I guess. Hint, hint. Oh, will you look at that? It's a Charmander, and it's stoking its tail fire by a lava flow. That's pretty darn cute. Try using some bait to lure that Charmander closer to you. There should be a few pieces of fluff fruit in the berry launcher. Aim the launcher and send the fluff fruit flying towards its feet. You carefully load and aim a fluff fruit close to the Charmander, then fire. Unfortunately, it appears that your aim was just a bit off, and you accidentally hit the Charmander with the fluff fruit instead, sending it straight into the lava. I said send the fruit flying, not the Pokemon. Poor little bugger. Oh no, not again. The ground starts to shake, and the pool of lava that the Charmander fell into begins to bubble with activity. A spot of bother. I'm picking up some very strange readings. A large mass of energy is starting to form near the lava flow. What do you see? The shaking intensifies, and a burst of lava erupts from the ground as a Charizard rises from the flames. Did that little guy just evolve to its final form? Get a picture. You steady your hand and raise the lens towards the rampaging Charizard then quickly snap a photo, perfectly capturing the unbridled fury of nature. Perfect shot, but that big fellow looks more than a bit perturbed. Okay, I'm getting you out of there. You put down the camera and notice the huge fire-type Pokemon is looking straight at you with a very angry look in its eyes. Hmm, 
I wonder if it remembers you hitting it with that fluff fruit. Well, I guess that answers that question. It roars and sends a fiery flamethrower blast at your direction. Goodness me. I'm doing my best to find a fast escape route out of there. I have an idea. Hopefully the Zero One can withstand the heat. Wait a second. Can withstand the heat? You really don't like the sound of that. What plan did she just come up with? Don't worry, love. I'm just going to shoot you out of a volcano. She's going to do what now? There is an 80% chance that you'll be just fine. Trust me. Trust her, she says. There are 20 pretty good reasons for you to be very worried. And one of those reasons is still angrily charging towards you right now. Okay, the coordinates are all set. When I give you the signal, activate the dash engine. If it all works out according to my calculations, you'll land safely in front of the lab. Activating evasive maneuvers. The Zero One begins to quickly wind its way through the cave system, but the Charizard is still gaining on you. You dodge and weave past plumes of fire blasts and molten lava, until you finally see a light at the end of the tunnel. The Zero One races towards the light. You're almost there. Wait a second. What's that? You can see the end of the tunnel. And all there is below is burning lava. I hope Natty knows what she's doing. You turn around to see that the Charizard that was once angrily chasing you has begun to run away in panic. What could have possibly happened that scared it off? Ah, that might be it. This can't be good. Get ready, it's almost time. The entire ground beneath you starts to shake violently as the sight of rushing lava begins to fill the tunnel you're driving on. Hold up a minute. Is this a volcanic eruption? You only get to dwell on the thought for a second just before the Zero One runs out of track and is sent flying in the air over the lava chamber of an erupting volcano. Now, activate the dash engine. You quickly press the same blue button as before. The force of the thrusters push you back into your seat and towards the wall of the volcano, and the speed of your jump allows you to start driving up the wall. How cool. You made it. Now get ready for the fun part. Wait, the fun part? You feel a great force coming from behind you as the eruption of the volcano sends you flying out of its mouth and into the skies above the island. You made it. You honestly can't believe that just happened. But now you find yourself in a different predicament. You're pretty sure the Zero One can fly or survive a fall from this height. Speaking of falling, you feel yourself losing altitude at a very alarming rate. I hope Natty planned for this. Of course I did. Deploy Parachute Zero One. You hear the whoosh of a huge parachute unravel, instantly slowing down your fall to a nice steady descent back towards the ground. The wind catches the fabric of the chute and you start to drift off in the direction of Oak's lab. There is no possible way that she could have planned all of this out. I never had a doubt in my mind. That's the power of science, and a whole lot of luck. Well, that's reassuring to know. Anyways, the professor and I will be waiting for you when you touch the ground. He's very excited to hear your thoughts about the Zero One. We'll see you soon. The land below you becomes larger and larger, and you swear you can already smell the ocean breeze from here. It looks like you're just about to land. I guess it's almost time for you to give your report to the professor. You make your landing right in front of the lab, no worse for the wear. Even the Zero One managed to make it back in one piece. What is this thing made of anyways? As promised, Natty and the professor are waiting for you outside the lab. Well, I must say, Natty, your calculations were spot on. Aren't they always? As humble as ever, I see. Well then, things got a little bit, shall we say, unpredictable out there for a moment, didn't they? But I have to know, 
Other than that, how did the Zero One handle herself out there? You can't lie. The glitch in the navigation system wasn't exactly your best introduction to the ride. Then again, that lightning bolt didn't help. But you would use it again in a heartbeat, given that the kinks were all worked out. Yeah, I'll make sure to beef up the installation for the next test subject. And I think I have the right person in mind for the job. Well, here are your Pokeballs and your Jigglypuff. Truth be told, I took him for a little walk around the island. That song of his packs a punch. I haven't napped like that in ages. Hard working as usual, Professor. Now then, would you care to come into the lab for a nice long rest and maybe a cup of tea? I'm sure you could use it. You appreciate the offer, but you have an appointment to keep in the Sinnoh region. Ah, duty calls, I see. I completely understand. Well, thank you for your help. I suppose I do have my own research to take care of. After that storm swept past the island, a mysterious rainbow cloud was left behind. I sense something spectacular just might be waiting for us in there. Are you sure I can't convince you to extend your stay? As tempting as that might be, duty calls, and there are more Pokemon waiting to be discovered in Sinnoh. You say your goodbyes to the Professor and Natty, then make your way back to the dock to catch the ferry. I wonder what discoveries you'll make next. Thank you for listening to Sleep Mode. We hope that you enjoyed your experience with us. Make sure you like and subscribe to Sleep Mode on YouTube and anywhere else you listen to your favorite podcasts. It's the best way to make sure that you never miss a moment to enjoy some rest. For this podcast, we used a couple of AI voice actors to help us finish up the episode. Did you notice? What did you think? Tell us in the comment section. If you'd like to help our channel grow, please consider becoming a Sleep Mode Patreon supporter for exclusive content and access to the Sleep Mode team. The link is in the description below. On the next episode of Sleep Mode, we'll be taking an adventurous trip to the world of Cyrodiil. Sharpen your blade, because Sleep Mode, the Elder Scrolls Oblivion, is up next. We'll see you again very soon. Good night, gamers. <laughs>